Chapo! Oh, man, y'all look good on a Wednesday night. Would you clap for your pastor, my twin brother, Pastor Q? <laughs> While you're clapping, would you clap for his lovely bride, Miss Trish? I love you both. Hey! Go ahead and have your seats. It is so good to be at chapel. Y'all look good. Amen. And it's such an honor and a privilege to, to be here to be with you all again. I bring you greetings from Evanston, Illinois, the First Church of God Christian Life Center, a church that has served our community for 113 years. And whoo, it's a blessing. And uh, I am glad to be back here. And uh, thank you all so much for always being so warm and so kind. I really, really appreciate you all. So many fabulous people here. You know who else I love here? Would y'all make some noise for Pastor Kyle? Man, that's... And his lovely wife, Miss Danielle. Y'all look like y'all empty nesting already. Lord, have mercy. So good to see you all. And uh, greet you all on behalf of my wife. Next month, we'll celebrate 19 years of marriage. Tina, she's watching. And uh, I don't have grown, uh, children anymore. I have four grown people in my house that uh, they tell me are children. And uh, we love them. 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Y'all should just start praying for me right now. See, you missed it. And our oldest, Nia Senior, in uh, Spelman, Atlanta, about to graduate college. We're so proud of her. And uh, yeah, that's a blessing. All right, it's uh, first Wednesday, and I am excited about what the Lord has given me to share. Would you pray with me? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because. The Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Now, on Wednesday nights back home in Evanston, uh, first city north of Chicago, that's where Evanston is, um, on Wednesday nights is Bible study night at First Church. And uh, we've been on break for August, and I actually did not teach any summer. Our associates did. We, we relaunched for the fall next Wednesday. Uh, so I'm excited. So I haven't taught Bible study since May. And as I was praying and preparing tonight, I started feeling this nudge of the Lord to build this message tonight kind of like a big Bible study. Is that all right? Is that all right now? I just want to let y'all know at the end of this, I might never get invited back because it might go real bad. Amen. Um, but I want to do that tonight. And tonight I'd like to talk to you from the Gospel Matthew, the first chapter. The Gospels are of importance, all of them. The three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And then the Gospel John. They are all important because they give the exploits of Christ through their own personal experiences, which all vary. Each gospel has its own purpose. For example, the Gospel John, I may have mentioned this before, here has the purpose, right, of expressing the deity of Christ. That is why it begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He immediately addresses Jesus as God in the first verse. He has very little interest in establishing anything about Jesus' earthly heritage. He's focusing on the deity of Christ. The Gospel Matthew is premised in first establishing Jesus' earthly order. This is why the Gospel Matthew begins with Jesus' genealogy through his father, Joseph. And tonight I'd like to start there at the sixth verse. And uh, I uh, wanted to read all of it, but I figured uh, I'm watching the clock. Let the church say amen. amen. Matthew 1, 6 through 16 says these words. And Jesus, excuse me, and Jesse was the father of King David. 
David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. And Solomon begat Rehoboam. Rehoboam begat the father, uh, uh, excuse me, Rehoboam was the father of Abijah, uh, and Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat begat Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham, and Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Then Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Y'all don't read this part. And Manasseh was the father of Ammon, and Ammon was the father of Josiah, and then Josiah was the father of Jeconiah and his brothers and cousins them at the time <laughs> of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel begat Zerubbabel, and Barubbabel begat Abihud, and Abihud was the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim was the father of Azor. Then Azor begat Zadok, and Zadok... <laughs> begat a king, and a king was the father of Eliot, and Eliot was the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar was the father of Mathen, and then Mathen, he was the father of Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Can I act like I'm at home real quick? Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. It's complicated, it's, it's complicated, it's complicated. Our message tonight is it's complicated. I love the genealogies of the Bible. I think they are of mass importance, prophetically and also theologically for our understanding. I have probably shared with you before my infatuation with them that Abraham and Sarah had the promised child Isaac, and Isaac and Rebekah begat Jacob. Jacob begat his fourth child, Kohath. Kohath begat Amram. Amram, believe it or not, married his father's sister, Jochebed. And Amram and Jochebed begat Miriam, Aaron. When Aaron was three, they begat Moses. Moses runs to the backside of the mountain because he kills a man, finds the seven daughters of the priest of Midian, and marries one of them, Zipporah. It's important to know that. Specifically in Jewish heritage, you had to know it. To this day, you still must. But it is of tremendous importance for us who are people of the household of faith in Jesus Christ to understand the significance of Jesus' heritage. Not only that it might inform us, but that it gives us a strong apologetic. In this particular context, Today, it is my hope that we leave here knowing as if we've never known before that Jesus is the Messiah and the Savior of the world. Now, Jesus' genealogy that I have just read for you, mostly in part, is the fulfillment of prophecy. And the, 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 the premise of the prophecy, y'all still with me? I ain't lose you yet, right? The fulfillment of the prophecy was that you will know the Messiah because he will come from the lineage, the house of David. If anybody comes saying they're the Messiah and they cannot prove genealogically that they are from the house of David, he's not the Messiah. And so this was tremendously important. And it is so important that Jesus himself, the red letters, and the book of the Revelation declares out of his own mouth. He says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and morning star. If I had time, I would tell you how beautiful it is that Jesus could be the root of David, the one who made him, and then David's offspring. He says, I made him and I came from him. I am the Messiah. Anybody who says it cannot disprove it because I have come from the lineage of David. And that is of tremendous importance and significance. And though it is mentioned several times, you remember the man who said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He was identifying that Jesus was not just a good man, not just a carpenter, not just a prophet, 
that you are the one that we've been waiting on because you are not just Jesus. You are the son of David. Now, this had to be proven genealogically. Are y'all with me? Because if not, then it could bring into tremendous question the potency of the ministry of the Messiah. We see a sharp example of this in the history section of the Old Testament, the book of Ezra, where there were some Levitical priests who could only be priests through the tribe of Levi and through genealogical proof. Look what happened. The children of the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Coles, and the children of Barzillai, which took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite and was called after their name, listen, these sought their register or their genealogical records uh, among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but they couldn't find the records to prove they were Le Levites by blood. And because they couldn't prove it, look what happened. They were called polluted and they were put out of the priesthood because they did not have genealogical proof that they were Levites they could not serve as priests. This is why it is important to understand that Jesus is of the house of David. Now, how does this apply to us? And I want to tell you, the Messiah who saved all of us has some crazy family members, okay? <laughs> And, and, and maybe you're wondering if God can use you with some crazy aunties and them and cousins and mama and them. I want you to know that Jesus shows us the beauty of his ministry, that he can take even the most complex of situations. And I want to say to whoever's listening to me tonight, wherever you've come from, whoever's in your bloodline, whatever you've experienced, whatever didn't go right, when Jesus hits your life, he overrides whatever it is that has been in your family line, your bloodline. When Jesus comes in, he makes all things new. And if I have some witnesses in here who have seen Jesus take a crazy family and do the impossible, open your mouth and shout on a way. Wednesday night. Look at somebody say, we talking about Jesus. Look, y'all, look who's in Jesus' bloodline. Look at this, look at this. Look, I'll go to verse five. I didn't read it tonight, but look at verse five. Salmon, now I think you actually say salmon. I don't think there's like the fish where the L is silent. I know the L is silent, but I think we call him Salmon. Salmon. This is Jesus' agenda line through Joseph, was a father of Boaz. Boaz's mama. <laughs> y'all quiet. <laughs> y'all lagging like y'all don't know who Rahab is. She ran the red light district in Jericho. That Rahab. <laughs> you telling me Jesus is great, 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 great grandmama was a red light district supervisor. <laughs> the Messiah's great, 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 great grandmama was a harlot. And he's still the Messiah. Lord, I feel Jesus tonight. <laughs> Somebody holler, and he's still the Messiah. <laughs> Watch this. And then Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed, so his mother, y'all remember Ruth. Boaz found Ruth in the field. Obed, this is, Ruth was a Moabitess. If you don't have nothing to do next week, study the Moabites. And you will find out that these people were crazy with a capital K. But the Mo, Jesus has a Moabite. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, it gets even worse. Everybody say it gets worse. It gets worse. In six and seven, and Jesse begat David. And David was a father of Solomon, whose mother, I love, see, Matthew was real tactful right here. <laughs> whose mother had been your, her name is Bathsheba. 
She was taking a bath on the roof while her husband was at war and David called her over to his crib. Tell the story. Look how pretty that is. And his mother had been Uriah's wife. Stop it, Matthew. Just stop it. Come on. David calls Bathsheba over. They have a first child, and God judges them, and the baby dies. They have another child after getting married, after David kills Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. And this child is born. His name is Jedediah. But we know him as Solomon. You mean to tell me the child from the union that had murder and adultery in it is in Jesus' bloodline? And you let the devil lie to you and tell you that because you came up in the foster system, Lord, y'all ain't praying for me. I tell you that because things weren't real pretty in your family that God can't use you when this stuff was in the genealogy of the Messiah? But chapel, it get real strange right here. Because if you are like me, prone to Old Testament study, and particularly Old Testament curses, Pastor Tom, this next example gets real sticky. And what happens is, is we see in the 11th verse, and Josiah, he became king at eight years old. You should read about King Josiah. He begat Jeconiah. And when I read that, that name jumped out at me from some previous study. Lord have mercy. Jeconiah is known, let me say it like this. He must have had problems because he got three names in the Bible. <laughs> Two fake IDs <laughs> and one real name. And he goes by Jeconiah. He's also known as Coniah. He's also known as Jehoiakim. Jeconiah, Coniah, or Jehoiakim is the same person. And he got in a bit of trouble Chapel, stay with me right here. He got in a bit of trouble, and the Lord dealt with him. It's back over in Jeremiah 22. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out? He and who? And his seed. And are cast into a land which they know not. Watch this. This is in Jesus' genealogy. Oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, write this man childless. A man that shall not prosper in his days for no man of his seed shall prosper. None of his seed will ever sit on the throne of David. None of his seed will ever be a ruler in Judah. So in Jesus' genealogy in Matthew 1, we run into Jeconiah in the third set of 14s who is cursed. And the curse that is on him is that nothing that ever comes from his loins will ever sit on the throne of David. Wait a minute. So that means, help me preach right here. When I say the name, you say curse. Jeconiah, curse. Salathiel, Zerubbabel, Abiyat, Eliakim, Azor, Sadok, come on, Akim, Elliot, Eleazar, Matthew, Jacob, Joseph. Joseph. 
Joseph, Jesus' dad, carries the curse of Jeconiah that disqualifies any of them from sitting on the throne of David. Y'all missed the shout. This is proof that it was the Holy Ghost that impregnated Mary and not Joseph because if it would have been Joseph, it would have disqualified Jesus from being our Messiah. But thank God. If you are glad that Jesus is Messiah and God got it right, even though it's complicated, open your mouth and praise God in here tonight. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's complicated, but it's good. And God... does this thing where he ensures that the Messiah could never be in question. And if Joseph physically impregnates Mary because he carries the curse of Jeconiah, it would have been passed to his seed, Jesus, and Jesus would not be qualified to be Messiah. And that's why we shout. But we now have this amazing solution and a new problem all at the same time. Because though we stand apologetically defending the gospel about the virgin birth, how can Jesus be Messiah without the blood of David? Because if Joseph has not impregnated Mary, Jesus does not have the genealogical reality of that line. But didn't he say in Revelation, I am the root and the offspring of David? Is Jesus lying? No. This is why we need all the Gospels. We know what John did and we know what Matthew did. But did you know that there is also a genealogy of Jesus in the entire third chapter of Luke? Oh, God. And in the entire third chapter of Luke, it actually gives Jesus' genealogy in reverse from Jesus all the way back to Adam. One of the complications is that in that first verse, it too says, Joseph. But... I remembered something that in Genesis 5 and 2, the Bible says God created male and female and called them Adam. That established that a wife can be identified by her husband's name. So in Luke 3, though it says Joseph, it's really talking about Mary. Look at it. In Luke 3.31, it tells us that Malaya was the son of Menon, which was the son of Matatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. Matthew gives the genealogy from David to Solomon. Luke gives the genealogy from David to Nathan. It is physiologically impossible that both of those genealogies through two different people can all lead to Joseph. So what we theologically surmise is that Luke 3 is proof that little old Mary, oh God, is from the house of David as well. And because she physically gives birth to Jesus, he meets the qualification of being from the house of David and therefore is qualified to be Messiah. And just in case it doesn't get clear enough for you there, the Lord technically gave us the answer all the way back in Genesis 
when he said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. And from the very beginning of time, chapel, God had what appeared to be a complicated set of circumstances to the natural eye, but the whole time he knew what he was doing and just like he did that for Jesus, I want you to know that he is too doing that for you. So lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory. I don't care who your mother was or was not who your father was or was not I don't care what your family heritage or history is I crush it the curse is broken in the name of Jesus you are blessed you are favored you are prosperous God is going to use you somebody shout it's complicated but God is good anyhow somebody give God a shout of praise in him Watch this chapel. Usually when I come, you know I have three points. Tonight I don't have three. I have one. Here is my point I want you to go home with. God always knows exactly what he is doing. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, God always knows what he's doing. Say this with me. Say, I'm blessed. My seed is blessed. My heritage is blessed, and God knows how to get out of my life what he wants. It's complicated, but God always knows what he's doing. Thank God it wasn't Joseph. I love him. But the next time somebody refutes the virgin birth, you tell them, I know that I know that I know. Because God, met who, watch this, who would have thought that the individual in the scenario that qualified Jesus was Mary and not Joseph? We always talk about Joseph. It was little young Mary who was carrying the blood of a king and then carried the baby who would be king. And it was her line that qualified Jesus to be Messiah. I want you to know the devil is a liar. I wish I had a better amen in that. The devil is a liar. Oh, say it like a preacher. Say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And if you think you're not qualified, he's lying. If you think your family ain't good enough, he's lying. Did you see what was in the Messiah's Bloodline, genealogy. If you think you're disqualified, the devil's lying. If you think your mistakes disqualify you, he's a liar. All that stuff that got us the Messiah, what do you think God going to do with you? Oh, God, let me try this side. All that stuff, and God still got the glory. If you know that God is going to get the glory out of your life, and nothing in your past will ever be able to stop it. Wake the neighbors up with a shout of praise. You're blessed. Your children are blessed. Your children's children are blessed. Lord, I feel Jesus in here. Your children are blessed. I want to do this. I'll pray and let you go. I want you to shout for three groups tonight. When I call them out, I want you to give God praise for each group. I first want you to give God praise 10 good seconds for your growing children. Come on, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, high school, they're growing. Praise God that the blessing is on your children. Hey!
I want you to fill this room with praise for the second group. If you know the blessing is on your bloodline, I uh, be 42 next month, and uh, kids are growing, and I know that eventually, sometime in the next 10, 15 years, 25, 35 years, that my, my children will be grown and married, and I'll become a granddad. I don't have any yet, but I pray for them already. Chapel, shout for your grandchildren tonight. Come on, my granddaughter's blessed. My grandson is blessed. All of them, no matter what was in our blood before, we're blessed now. Last thing so I can pray. I really want to hit you right here. Would you tear the roof off for your grown children? Shout for your grown children, 25, 35, all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, you're sitting next to a curse breaker because the blessing is on my house. How? Oh, it's complicated, but God always knows what he's doing. It's complicated, but God always knows. How you get so blessed, girl? It's complicated, but God always knows how he do. How does God use you? It's complicated, but God always knows what he's doing. How is God hand on your life so strong? It's complicated. I got some Rahabs in my blood. I got some roofs in my blood, but God is still getting the glory. So God. Your ways are above our ways. God blessed Joseph for raising the Messiah. But what you needed from him was not his blood. You needed his mind and his voice so that Jesus could be Messiah. Lord, you, you did it through a little girl named Mary. Lord, this room is full of Marys. People who don't feel qualified, people who wonder how could God pick me with all the stuff in my life, in my past, in my family. You always know what you're doing. Even when it looks crazy to us, even when people like the genealogy skip pages of our life because it's just, it's just too many begots and begots and who had who's. The end of the story is you preserved a lineage to qualify the Messiah. And as you did for Jesus, you've done for us. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I go. My seed is blessed. My house is blessed. Chapel, one more time, shout for the blessing on your house. Thank you for joining us for service today. We love that we get to serve you and your family. If you'd like to continue your worship experience through giving, we have three simple, quick, and secure ways for you to do so. First, you can use text to give Simply compose a text message with the keyword, the chapel, followed by your gift amount to 77977. Hit send and follow the prompts. Or visit our website, thechapel.cc slash give and complete your giving online. Finally, you can always mail in your giving to the chapel at 8833 Mitchell Boulevard, Trinity, Florida, 34655. Thank you for your continued generosity. We could not and would not want to do this without you.